Hey guys and welcome back. In this section, I'm going to show you how to create an accurate selection around an object and then we can change the color of that object. So up until now, we've been a little bit loose with our selections. Now we're going to get super accurate and we're going to do this using the pen tool. So if you've never used the pen tool before, I highly suggest checking out our Photoshop basics tutorial on the pen tool. Just type in pen tool in the search bar on Flurm. You'll find it no problem. And uh, we're going to show you how to do it. So don't worry. It's not that hard. Let's go ahead and start by opening up our image, Intermediate Coloring 3. Okay, I'm gonna hit F for full screen and we're gonna zoom in and we're gonna basically trace right around this camera. So let's hit P for the pen tool right here and basically here's how the pen tool works. You can click and drag and this makes curves. You can see these curves that I'm making here. There we go, all these fun curves, fun, fun curves. Just click and drag, click and drag all the time. Okay, we'll go back to the beginning. And then when you found your shape that you want, you can right click and go to make selection. Boom. And then we know we can use selections for layer masks. Okay, so if we wanted to color just that area, we could do that. Now, uh, curves, let's go to w window and down to paths. Curves are stored here in paths. So if I click on my work path again, you're going to see it. I can hold control or command and activate this again. And I can change this path at any time. So I can click here. And drag this out. I can hold, I'm holding control or command, by the way. There we go. Dragging these guys out. I can actually cur click on a curve itself and move that around. So these, these uh, control arms here basically just define what a curve does, how it's shaped. So you can see as I pull it out this way, it pulls the curve with it. Pull it out that way, it's going to pull the curve with it. Okay, so that's basically how the pen tool works. Now you can make, um, you can see that all these are continuous curves. If you want to make a point, hold Alt or Option, and you can click on there, and then you can make a point. So you can take these little, there we go, you can take these control arms, and you can turn them into points. There we go. So you can see we got a couple points now. Boonk, boonk. So Alt or Option to make points, and Control or Command to move anything. And that's really all you need to know. So let's go ahead and delete that path, and we'll start again. So starting over here, we're going to click right down here on the bottom of our camera. And then I'm going to click and drag out in this direction. And the whole goal here is we want to trace the camera, right? So start, drag out in that direction. It's going to make a little bit of a curve there. Next, let's click here and drag out there. It's going to make a curve right around that part of the camera. And I'm going to go all the way up here and click and drag out there. There we go. Looking really nice. And you can see that curve pretty much encompasses that part of the camera. So pretty easy so far. Now, we have a change in direction. We get an angle. So remember, if you have an angle, hold Alt or Option. So Alt or Option, click and drag this in the direction for my new angle. Boom. And then I'm going to click there and drag out. Now, keep in mind, you can move these at any time. Hold Alt or Option, and I can move this. No big deal. So if I don't nail it the first go round, it's not a big deal. Alt or Option again, because we have another change in direction. There we go. And I'm going to click here and drag out in this direction. Boonk. And that's going to get the whole thing. Now, it does, it, you can see it kind of goes up there and it dips in a little bit. If you need to add a point, just click anywhere on your curve and just click right there. And you can add a point. And then you can hold Control or Command and move this if you want to. Okay. So you can always add points. If you want to subtract a point, just hover over it and click and it'll subtract that point away. Pretty nice. So let's go around the finger now. We're going to go right down here. Oh, you can see it pulled it out way over there. So not a big deal. Hold Alt or Option and drag it back. Just like, you know, put it where you want it to go. There we go. Up and around there. There we are. All right. I'm going to hold Control or Command. Let's go. Yeah, that looks pretty good. And... There we go. Let's hold Alt or Option and drag it right up around there. All right, this little looks like a little little capsule, a little pill or something. There we go. Pretty cute. Alt or Option and right around there. Okay. Now for the finger, we're just going to kind of click and drag. So, uh, you know, click and drag right at the edge there. Same thing here click and drag. All right, same thing there. 
If you need to move a point, just hold Control or Command, and you can move these at any time, okay? There we go. I'm going to bring that right into there. We got a little bit of a change in direction going on here. So let's hold Alt or Option to change direction. Boonk. Another one, Alt or Option to change direction. And Alt or Option to change direction again. There we go. We're almost done with the camera here, guys. Okay, so now we're just doing some clicking and dragging because we don't have any change in direction. So it's really easy when you don't have to change direction. You just kind of click and drag right around. There we go. And it looks like it kind of continues over there. So let's just bring that right to about there. There we go. Okay, and we're almost done with the camera body now. So let's try clicking here because we got one big curve. So we'll see if I can just take care of it with, uh, you know, with one curve there. There we go. Let's bring that right in and hold Alt or Option. Okay, and we're almost done with the camera body, guys. I know it seems like a bit tedious, but this is a really, really great way to make selections because they're very accurate. All right, now we're almost done. I'm going to click here at the end, and you can see I got a little O right next to my cursor. So click there and drag out, and that just completes your selection, or completes your path right there. So let's double click on our work path. Now we're going to save it, just call it camera. Here we go. And now it's saved in my document, which is super nice. So anytime I want to get back to this, really really easy to do you can just go to your go to window down to paths and it's stored right there okay so now we have that path it's outlined our camera super well now we can go ahead and turn that into a selection and load that selection as a layer mask so to turn this into a selection it's really easy you just use your pen tool and just right click inside of it i'm going to go to make selection now, if you don't feather this at all, the edge is gonna be a super sharp edge and chances are it's not gonna look realistic. So I do recommend feathering a little bit. In this case, we're gonna try 0.5 pixels. That looks pretty good. So let's hit okay. There we go. We can see it's a selection now and look how nice that selection is, beautiful. Now, let's go ahead and grab an adjustment layer. So I'm gonna to go to layer, down to new adjustment layer and over to hue saturation. There we go. And our layer mask, or the sorry, the selection automatic, automatically gets loaded into the layer mask. So let's hold Alt or Option and click on my layer mask. And you can see that's what my layer mask looks like. Okay, perfect selection around the camera. You can see there's a finger right there. There's the flash there. Really, really nice. Okay, so now we can adjust our hue. There we go. And you can see as I adjust our hue left and right, it's doing a really nice job. Now. There are other colors you can see as I push this over here, we're seeing some other colors in and around the finger. That's actually not because of the selection, it's because of the reflection of these fingers and stuff like that on that area. So if you're getting something like this that's not looking right, hit that colorize button, boom, and then everything's gonna be the same color. So that's gonna be that's gonna work out a little bit better for you. Okay, let's bring our saturation right down about there. And what was the original color of this? Kind of bluish? Yeah, let's make it purple. Why not? I think that looks great. So it looks purple now, which is really nice. Let's just be sure inside of here, there we go. Inside of here, I think we need to make this not visible there. Like we don't want it to be purple inside of there. Okay, well, that's not hard to do. We can use the pen tool for that also. So let's create a new path. Pen tool, and this is a really easy path, right? Because basically I'm just going to make a rectangle. Boonk. There we go. Looks good. And I can hold Control or Command and move these points at any time if I need to. All right. There we are. That looks good. Now let's right click, I'm going to go to make selection, same feathering, and then here on my layer mask, I'm just going to go to edit and on to fill, and we're going to fill this with black. 
So I don't want it to be visible right there. Okay, that's basically just going to get my original detail back from from that little area there. Okay, so we've done a really nice job coloring our camera. We get a great selection. Now there are a couple more things we want to keep in mind. Um, remember, we got the finger is like right on the camera, so colors bounce around all the time, right? So we need some of the color from the finger to then be on the camera as well, even after we changed the color of it. So really easy to do. What we're going to do is create a new layer, B for the brush tool, and I'm just going to sample this color of the finger right there, okay? And I'm going to change my layer blend mode from normal down to color. All right, and then we're just going to paint here just like pretty subtly. Again, I'm using a soft edge brush here. There we go. Nice soft edge brush. And we're using a low flow. You should use a flow of about 20% here. There we go. And it's basically just going to get some of the color from your hand or whatever object it's kind of touching. It's going to transfer onto the camera and that's going to help it look much more realistic. So let's just zoom in here and turn this off and on. You can see, there we go, looking great. I might have gotten a little bit too much for it here. Just hit the eraser tool. You can use a low flow for the eraser tool and erase it right away. There we go. That's looking nice and real. Now, also, the pill, this little flash thing is kind of interesting because I think it is actually getting a little bit of the color from the uh, from the, the camera. I think it's like semi-transparent there. So what we can do is we can, we can color this as well, right where the pill is, but we can just use a lower opacity. So what I'm gonna do is duplicate our hue saturation. Let's go, just go ahead and duplicate this. There we go. Now I'm gonna make the layer mask black. So I'm gonna hit shift delete and we're gonna fill this with black. There we go. And now I'm gonna paint white on the layer mask just right over top of this pill. Just with my little brush tool. There we go. Looking really nice. And now you can see that's only gonna be visible on this layer, right? So on that layer, and let's just lower the opacity. Something around 50%. So it does have that color in there, you know? Just like it had a little bit of that green color in there, it's got a little bit of this color in there too, but it still looks like it's a, it's a separate color. So at opacity of 100%, it doesn't look right. Here at 50%, that's starting to look pretty good. Yeah, I think right at 50% is exactly where we want it. So a little bit of that color kind of coming in from there. And then of course, right on top here, we have these guys selected as well. Now we are almost done here, guys. We do have the cord that wraps around uh, the person's hand and we're gonna go ahead and do that as well. And we're gonna get this done with the pen tool. Also, we've already made a pen path. Let's go ahead and make a new one and I'm gonna call this cord. There we go and basically just trace around this cord and then we can just add that to the layer mask of this layer. Super easy to do. So let's start up right around here. I'm gonna hit P for the pen tool. We're gonna click here and then I'm gonna click and drag out in this direction. There we go. All right, there we go. And just kind of clicking and dragging out now, in general, you want to use as few points as possible because that's going to help you make a really nice, smooth curve. But with an object like this, it's kind of a little bit variable. So I'm like, probably need to create more points than I would for like the camera. Remember how the camera, we just made a point for here and then we did this whole area and just one more point there. We had a really nice, smooth curve there. I think for this string, we're just going to have to do um, we're gonna have to create more points. That's okay. It's easy. Click and drag. Click and drag. There we go. And keep in mind, you really can move these at any time. So if you do something and you're like unhappy with it, don't worry about it. There we go. Because the pen tool can take a little bit of time to get used to, you know, learning how to use it and, you know, getting getting faster with it. 
Like this, I want to bring that point in. So I'm going to hold Control or Command and click on it and then just bring it in. See? All right. And then going down here, this pulled out in that direction. So if you need to change the direction of something, Alt or Option, and that's going to allow you to change the direction of something. There we go. And I can already see that I'm going to have to come in here and kind of fix this up a little bit because it's not perfect. All right. Luckily, it's easy to do. And that's why we use the pen tool. So let's go ahead and bring this over there. I'm going to hold Control or Command and click on it, and then you can just move it. Sometimes it'll select like the whole thing. Just make sure that, there we go. You Sometimes it'll select like, if I'm out here and I just try to select the whole thing, it'll move like a curve. So just be sure, continue to hold Control or Command and then click on the thing you want. If you're moving a control point, just make sure it's black. See right now when I just click on the whole, uh, the whole path, none of these little control points are filled in with black. You can see it's got a, it, it's not filled in, but if I hold Control or Command and then click on that one, it becomes black, and then I can move just that point. There we go. All right. See, that needs to go a little bit further in there. It's going a little bit outside of it, so I just need to adjust it right over there. The big benefit of the pen tool is that you can adjust this stuff really whenever you want. I don't even think we need that point there, so I'm just going to hover over it and click there, and it's just going to remove that point for me. go move that kind of up in that direction all right I think that's a pretty good start so let's just right click here and go to make selection okay nice amount of feathering and then here on the layer mask remember this is the original layer mask that we used to color the camera remember okay so here on the layer mask just go to edit down to fill and we'll fill that with white Bonk. and there we go we have a nice purple strap on the camera too and it looks like there's just a little bit visible. I'm just going to use this with a tiny brush tool. I'm going to go tiny, tiny brush tool just to get that done. All right, that looks good. And then remember, that's the 50% visible. So let's go ahead and close that out. Paths are super, super helpful. If this didn't do exactly what you wanted, not a big deal. You can always click on your path and edit it again. Okay, so your paths are always editable and they're stored. I still have the path for my camera, which is very nice. So let's go ahead and close that out now. And we can see we've changed the camera. It's a super accurate selection, which is really great. And now we can change these values at any time. So uh, if I want to go back to like a yellow type color, there we go. There we go. Something like yellow. Just remember we got 28 and 28. And then this, remember we did, um, this is a reduced opacity. So I just want to make sure that these numbers match. There we go. And that looks perfect. So let's go back. Let's do like a pinkish color. Okay. And there we see our hue is set to zero. So we'll set this one to zero also. And that's going to match. But I think I like the blue one. So let's go 270 on that. And over here, we'll go 270 on that one too. And now they match. That bluish purple, I do think is really nice. There we have it guys, how to create really perfect selections around an object. And then once we have those selections, we can change the color pretty easily.